Welcome to Snapshots from the Cuban Diaspora and Odyssey in Images, a joint production of Firehouse Projects, the On Conservatory, and Cranberry Coast Concerts. This program is supported in part by the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs and viewers like you, with your hosts, Lilia Fontana, Kirk Whipple, and Marilyn Morales. This program honors the generation of refugees fleeing Cuba at the onset of the Castro Revolution and the families that came after. This series of presentations seeks to shed light upon the journey of refugees from their homeland into their adopted country. Hi, Kirk Whipple. Are you there? As a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn Morales. Unmute. Okay. Hola. <laughs> and yes, I am. We are all thrilled to see Ubaldo Enriquez here. Welcome. We love you. Mwah. <laughs> After this lovely uh, uh, personal greeting, uh, Lily, would you like to uh, do our pre roll announcement? Good afternoon and welcome to Snapshots from the Cuban Diaspora and Odyssey in Images. It is our series of up close and personal interviews with Cuban exiles who are sharing their journey in stories and photographs. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a Snapshots de la Diaspora Cubana, una odisea en imágenes, nuestra serie de entrevistas íntimas y personales con exiliados cubanos quienes están compartiendo sus experiencias en historias y fotografías. <laughs> Bravo. Why does everybody laugh when I speak Spanish? I don't know. <laughs> no, I think we appreciate that you're doing it. Well, thank you. I, it, I, I try. Very well. Before we start our program, we have to give some thanks to some very important people. Yes, we do. Uh, we would like to thank the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor and Board of County Commissioners, also the Florida Division of Cultural Affairs. Y queremos dar las gracias al Condado de Miami-Dade, Departamento de Asuntos Culturales y la Junta de Asuntos Culturales el alcalde de condado de Miami-Dade y junta de comisionados del condado, el Florida División de las Artes y Cultura. Um, I am so thrilled to have you introduce our special guest today. Absolutely, and I am so delighted. I was just telling him before we started how happy I am that he's with us. Um, we've been talking about this for a couple of years. Um, so let me talk a little bit about him. He is most affectionately known as Pepe Peña in Que Pasa, USA, and has appeared in numerous TV programs and theater in English and in Spanish. While pursuing his career as an actor, he was developing a passion for making art. And, at, and we are going to talk about his careers, both careers, in this soiree. So let us welcome the very handsome Manolo Villaverde. Bienvenido, Yay! Manolo. Thank you for having <laughs> Well, let's let's start with um, your early beginnings, like how we greet each other, Cuban to Cuban. De qué parte de Cuba tú eres? Uh, Havana and um, um, neighborhood. Uh, Paul Bibura, that's where I was born. And then uh, I moved to, uh, well, I, I used to live about three blocks away from the uh, um, cathedral in, uh, in um, Pedrado Street. And uh, I lived there for maybe until I was uh, 12. Then we moved to Santo Suarez. And then uh, from there to Miami and no, no. Actually, I uh, when I finished school, my father suggested that I uh, finish my studies in uh, New York, and then um, I went to New York to live in 1955 and study and also to work. Right. So, what right. did you what did you study when you went to New York? 
uh, county. Ah. In the, uh, in the uh, I don't know, you, you know, New York in those years, there was no, a I branch. Just... There was a branch called Baruch branch. Was, I think it was in that in uh, 34th Street or 32 or something like that. And uh, I just studied there until uh, I decided sometime later to join the, the Navy, U.S. Navy, and then until um, my discharge, and then I went back to Cuba. Mistake. Really? Yes. Oh, no, no. I, I should take back. I, I take it back. It wasn't a mistake. It was... Uh, the destiny or life, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the end of 1958, my mother was very sick with a very unknown disease by those days. Uh, it was called Raynaud disease. And it was, uh, it was a combination of three or four different diseases, or whatever you call it, or symptoms. And... Uh, then I I stay there. Then I now that I am really old, older than uh, Santa Claus. Uh, <laughs> so I, in New York, I have a, a, a really strange experience because when I was uh, my job was dealing with the uh, sugar exchange. Uh, similar to a stock exchange, but in, in commodities. And then I uh, I met this guy. I was an older person, and uh, I was very young. And uh, he was a friend of a woman. That I didn't know she was very famous in Broadway. And I became very involved. She invited me many times to her home to have dinner and so on. And uh, well, this this famous act actress, uh, she had a friend, very famous actor also, Cyril Richard, uh, who was playing at the moment with Mary Martin um, and Cyril Richard and some other people. I can't remember the names. And they they sometimes they they gave me some tickets to see Broadway shows. I went, but without interest. I had the opportunity to see uh, uh, Harris, I mean, uh, actress, uh, Julie, uh, Julie Harris? Uh, no, no, Julie Harris doing the St. John and uh, some others. But I didn't care about the theater at all. So uh, uh, this woman... Uh, to me about the theater and the advantage of being a, a, an actress or an actor and all, all this. And now I'm going to tell you the name of the, the, the person. Maybe you don't recognize her. Maureen Stapleton. Oh, my God. Of course. Yes. Absolutely. I, I, yes. I, love, I love her. I love her until she died. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know who she was. Mm. So... I, with her, I, I met a lot of important people on those, on those days, on those years. But now I, re I said, well, my God, I know, got to know these people, and I didn't know who they were. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's go back to uh, where I left the, uh, the story. 1959, the revolution came, and then uh, my mother is still very sick. And I said, I, I can leave my mother and my father here and go back to New York. So I stay. Then to kill, you know, some time, I, uh, I had a, a very good friend of mine, Luis Okendo, who later on became grandfather of Que Pasa USA. Mm -hmm. So he said, no, look, why don't you go to uh, some classes? They're a very famous director in, in Cuba. Okay. And she was she was giving some lessons to to different levels, uh, pre, um, people who like to become an actor, uh, medium like uh, extras in semi in CMQ that would like to you know improve their acting careers or whatever, and also 
it was a superior pass for actors, already actors, professional actors, who wanted to um, improve also their careers and their knowledge on acting, and acting and directing and so on. Andres Castro was the, the, uh, the director's name. And he had the, uh, the uh, small theater ne ne next to, um, very close to uh, El Malecón. And uh, I went there and I sat in the last row with the people, some guests and uh, people that were involved in uh, the acting. And then the, uh, the Students regarding the on stage or the first two rows and so on. And the director used to give the classes there. And one day, uh, I met this girl, beautiful girl, beautiful, beautiful. It was like an angel. Later on, I knew her name was Charito Sirgo, daughter of Otto Sirgo, very famous actor. So. We were young, fell in love, not in love. But, you know, we attracted each other, and uh, we went out sometimes and uh, having a little batido, the chocolate, or the fresa, or whatever, or the vainilla. And then we talked, and then Luis told me, you know, he is in love with you. I said, yeah, but I'm not planning. I, I'm planning to go back to New York. I mean, I, I'm not planning to fall in love or anything like that. So uh, one day he was taking some improv from the director, and she was beautiful. She was okay as an actress also as well. And uh, there was an actress who didn't have a, a, um, an actor to make the um, improv, the proper improv, because I mean, he needed a, an actor. So. Andres turned around to the back, door, uh, back row and says, does any of these gentlemen who would like to uh, join us and then help the, this actress to do his, uh, I mean, her, um, her part? And then uh, Charito said, Manolo, you go, go. I said, are you crazy? I'm, I, I'm not interested in this stuff. No, the police is just for a moment. Remember, it was an old actress. Her name was Armenia Silva. I used to work later on as a professional with her a lot. A good actress, very good friend. And uh, I said, well, I mean, nobody knows me here. If I do it right, fine. If I do it wrong, fine too. And uh, she said, well, Manolo, this is the story. You are a taxi driver. I get into the taxi, and I and to fall in love with you to make it up. I said, oh, that's interesting. So we, we follow, you know, the story in, like in April. And uh, when we finish, everybody nodding and giving a hand. I said, oh, that's right. That's good. Manolo, you're great. I said, what? <laughs> and then when I came down on the stage, Andres said, Manolo, he used to talk like this. Manolo, you are good. You better study hard to become an actor. I said, oh, come on, please, give me a break. Uh, the story is that I start, maybe I started like for months or so. And then Luis told me, how old were you? How old were you, Manolo? Old? Let's see. I don't want to lie. Uh, I was 20, 22. Luis um, told me, you better go to another place. That it would be more professional and more, um, like I would say, more complete academic uh, uh, instructions to learn. Makeup. You learn uh, design, stage design. You make. Uh, you, you learn the um, history of the theater and so on, and speech and how to talk, which is very important. So when you don't have a mic, 
your voice has to go all the way down there. So uh, I went to the uh, Teatro Universitario in uh, the University of Havana. Then I met this lady, Elena de Armas. Uh, the first time, she, I didn't hate her, but I, she kind of uh, uh, rejected me somehow. I don't know. I, I, I had this impression that I, I confirmed it later on. And uh, well, he said, well, you know what? Uh, you're kind of late. I said, late? My appointment was at 8, and this is 8.10. So, no, 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 I'm, I'm talking because uh, you started, you have to start on the second year because that's the first year we cancel it. So in other words, I have to make three years in two years. He says, she says yes. Okay, fine. And then I did. I met there. Wonderful people, wonderful people. Excellent. As a matter of fact, I, I was the only uh, uh, student of Marquez, um, um, the uh, stage designer, the famous stage designer in, in, in a th a theater in Havana. Luis Marquez. He taught, me, he taught me a lot of things about uh, stage designing and, and, and the tricks of it and uh, so on. So anyway, um, I studied the three, uh, the three years in two years, and uh, the, when the graduation, I'm trying not to be humble. I'm trying to say, you know, things that were like this, and and, and you, you judge whatever you think. So, what year? Uh, what year were those, Manolo? Was that right well, after the revolution? That was, that, that was in 1961. Okay. 1961. And the, I, I was awarded the first place, the first prize uh, in, in, the, in the graduation of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, my teacher, Shai, I love the man, taught me everything I know. As a, a, he was the nicest man I ever, I ever met, Golfo de Luis. He, I had another another teacher, very good, Julio Matas. Those two people were the people that really taught me how to act, especially Adolfo de Luis. What a wonderful teacher. Uh, Adolfo, whatever you are, I thank you. And, uh, well, the first prize was a... Uh, um, Leading role in a, a, the, in, um, a program called Le Teatro. And the play they chose was Hasty Heart. Hasty Heart was one of the movies that Ronald Reagan did with, um, I think it was uh, Patricia Neal. Patricia Neal, I think, watched oh. the uh, movie. It was a beautiful, beautiful play, beautiful. I play a Scottish man and uh, was great. So after that, in that night, that particular night, was a person watching TV and watching the program. Lelia Fiallo. And finished, she called, talked to the director, and I said, do you, do you mind giving me the phone number of this actor, Manolo Villaverde? Because I want to use him. And then he, she gave me a role in the, in the telenovela, uh, like a soap opera. At that moment, a very uh, popular soap opera. It's called Bajo el Cielo de Argelia. Mm. Then, from there, I started working in different programs, Sueño de Mujer, El Teatro, La Comedia del Domingo. Uh, All this in Cuban television? Yes. Until... Until well, in between until I, I I flew out of Cuba in 1964 with my mother, my my, my mother, my father, and my brother uh, went out of Cuba, uh, in other words, to Miami here, 1961, mm. the beginning. I stayed right there because my grandmother, my mo uh, my, uh, my grandfather, my aunt, and her husband. 
worst thing. So I said, somebody has to, and I thought in my, my innocent dreams that I, because I had, I was a, a resident of the United States and a veteran of the U.S. Navy. I had some privilege. No, no, they know the communist party don't believe in that. I was in prison three times. I, I was going to ask you that. Uh, I heard that you were a, a political prisoner. No, it wasn't a political prisoner. Oh, okay. Just... Like, uh, but, uh, it wasn't that because they never proved it. I, I was involved in contra-revolution. Mm. Yes. I have to admit it. I mean, admit it because it's true. Uh, I was in two uh, groups, different groups. The first one, uh, I opened my eyes in 1960. I said, this is not what they say it is. So I decided, I said, with other people, like maybe you remember Bernalito Menendez, uh, Cesar Marti, Gabriel Casanova, uh, Rick Almirante, uh, more, and also Enrique Satisteban. Yes. So uh, we start doing some work around against the revolution. And uh, they caught us. One day, we were going to a meeting in um, the house of this uh, Griselda Nogueras, who was also uh, involved in the, the movement against the Castro. And uh, suddenly, the car had a flat tire. We didn't go to the time to, to the meeting. People in the meeting, they got cut, including Griselda. On me, not the rest. We keep doing the revolution, and then I joined another group that was leading uh, through Rita Grau, etc. Some other people involved, and uh, my mission was delivering. You know, it wasn't that dangerous. But it was. It was a very compromised uh, situation. Uh, delivering the. Fake visas of the Peter Pans. Because those visas, they were fake. Hmm. We had no fake. Sorry. We had the real stamp. I mean, they had the real stamp. I, 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 I didn't never use it. They had the real stamp, but it wasn't approved. Like uh, you have a stamp, and then I steal it for. Ask for the stamp and then the use it. This is for a good cause, and then use it. You know? And uh, that was a story. And uh, the last time it was it was very, very, very dangerous situation in 1964. When uh, the first time I got in jail, my mother came back to Cuba. She said, "Oh, you need me, so I'm going to be with you until you get out." mother, my father, my, my sister and her husband. Get out, I will stay here in Cuba with you. So I tried to convince her not to do it, but no, um, no, 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 no exit on this. So anyway, um, in 1964, I, uh, I left Cuba. In, uh, it was a very, very sad moment. Uh, I remember when I got into the plane, I, met, I sat in, next to a lady, a very old lady, because they didn't give you an assignment seat or anything like that. And then she said, look, down here, see the Cuba for the last time. I said, lady, I don't want to see it. I'm not going to see this island anymore my life and up today I kept the promise. Mm. Uh, I was very disappointed 
very, very disappointed of my Cuban friends, citizens, and so on. Very, I have to say it. It's something that I feel. I don't feel, I feel sorry for them. Right? I was disappointed. So that was a story. I came to Miami. I'm, me, I'm sorry. I went to Mexico, my mother and I, because my fa my uh, parents and my aunt and, and husband, they couldn't get out. So anyway, uh, we went to Mexico. Uh, my father was having Miami three, three jobs. Then uh, I said, I started working here, doing some dubbing, some uh, uh, to operate uh, radio, and uh, suddenly one day I was doing a, a play with Norma Zuniga, um, the Rose Tattoo, and the uh, producer, Pepe Bamonde, who was there in the audience, saw me and offered me to be cast. I refused three times. I refused. Ask him. I refused. I refused. I refused. I said, no, I don't want to do any television anymore. One day, my father insisted, please answer this man and tell him that you don't want to do it. I said, well, no, 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 let me, let me just get out. Let me, let me have two drinks, then I go to the, uh, to the casting. What to the casting? The moment I improved, I, 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 I did this uh, the sketch, there was a man from Washington. He says, okay, you are Pepe. You want to sign the contract? I said, what? Okay, I didn't know what, what it was really. And the if it was going to be a successful thing or it was like a flop or, you know, but I trusted. And then uh, the, the persons, the people that they were involved that I met that, that uh, beautiful night was Velia, Luis, a very good friend of mine, Ana Margarita. Rocky. No Rocky since she was seven. You know, Rocky <laughs> went to school with me. Yeah, well, we, he, he yeah. used to live in 97th Avenue. In, in, yeah. In, uh, in, yeah, well, West that was, no, was, just, that, that was yeah. Westchester. West Native Chester. Westchester. Well, if, if I can school. jump in here, you know, that's a, that's a good segue because yes, I know we have some photos uh, yeah. that might be evidence of all this. Can, can we can we show a few photos? Yeah. Perhaps, Mel, you could just share with us uh, some thoughts as some of these photos come into view. Now, the first one, from what I understand, is are your parents? Oh, my mother and my father. Yes, and and could, can you talk a little bit about your father? I my father was a very uh, uh, famous person because I mean, in Cuba, he was a professional uh, football player. And uh, he, soccer, he in, right? Soccer for yeah, soccer, United soccer, right. States. Correct. Yes. And he's uh, well. You can find it in um, some information in the uh, internet. Uh, were, he was called Bebito Villaverde, mm -hmm. and um, he was very famous. He played in different countries and Spain and so on. And uh, he was called. It means like now, like. Uh, Lay or somebody like that. It was a very famous. As a matter of fact, the only the only statue that there is in Cuba of a, of a, a football player, my father's, was in trop in uh, Estadio Tropical. Maybe it doesn't exist anymore. So you came by your good looks honestly. Yes, what? he did. He, you look like <laughs> him. <laughs> And speaking he was of, a good-looking man, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, so your mother really was very beautiful, too. So let's not leave her out. Oh, there she is again. Let's take one yes. more. Yes, she, yes. Was, she, she was the sweetest and the best mother in the world. Mm. Okay. The best. And, then, and where is where are you here in the snow? Uh, in Long Island City. That's where wow. I live. Yeah, I oh, knew that wasn't oh, in Cuba. No. <laughs> well, we have we have fake snow in Cuba. But, uh, we can we can afford that to to uh, to put it anymore. It's too expensive the fake one. <laughs> yeah. 
was me in the Navy. Where were you stationed? In San Diego. Ah. A very pensive pose and, an, and another pensive pose as well. Oh, that was, I just got to New York. That was in 1959, maybe, 1960. Okay. I, I, that was me at, at the beginning of uh, Que Pasa. Hmm. I, I remember Ana Margarita used to say, Manolo, why do you loan me your eyelashes? Because I don't need the, uh, the, <laughs> the makeup with the eyelashes. I said, take them because I, it really bothers me when I use glasses. <laughs> uh, I I know I know how you feel. Uh, whenever we do the Liberace show, I have to take these off. <laughs> <laughs> and this next photo is uh, fast forwarding just a couple of years. No, not a couple of years. A little <laughs> bit more. A little bit more. That when I borrow your little hair. <laughs> <laughs> Our next photo. Oh, there was a play, a beautiful comedy, beautiful, one of the best comedies I ever made, uh, Balada de los Tres Inocentes. That was with uh, Mario Martin in the back, and then they playing uh, uh, Father Gino in, the, in that comedy. Was that, where was that? Uh, that was in Miami. Uh, that was in uh, 19, 1970. Six, uh, seventy-eight, something like that. Hmm. Okay. That was a sweet bird of youth. Well, was that in Miami? Uh, let, me, let me tell you, that was the only time that I, 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 uh, huh. I, it was, I suppose, it was in the in the in the script. I get off the uh, the bed naked. And I said, oh, this is too much. And that was in the Olympia Theater. I said, no, 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 no. Let me see. Let me see what the... And then Demetrio said, no, no, I turned the light very, very dim, and nobody will see it. Nobody will see it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they were too late uh, in the front row, and uh, they were excited. Anyway, <laughs> this... Uh, this is in the Teatro Universitario playing uh, uh, Otello. Oh. Oh. That was uh, with uh, Pilar Arenas in the uh, story of uh, Queen Elizabeth and uh, Felipe Hermoso. Uh, Reina Enamorada se llamaba. It was called this that day. That was in, uh, in, in Bellas Artes Theater on, on A Street. Mm. And that was, I don't know who, who are these who people. Who could that be? I know, right? <laughs> that was he, well, such... I don't know. He's always angry. <laughs> I'm not like that, you know? That was such a wonderful, um, phenomenal concept, that show. Yes. It really... Uh, I think it transcends so many other things that that has been done since. It just it surpasses it. Is is what I'd like to say. Well, I uh, I, I had the opportunity to be in Japan and also in Amsterdam, and uh, people recognize me. As a matter of fact, in the hotel, one of the uh, I stayed at the uh, Nuotania Hotel in in Tokyo, and. Um, one of the uh, employees there on the front desk, I said, are you an actor? I said, yes, how do you know? Because I watched the program to learn Spanish. I said, well, you, you, uh, you're doing the wrong thing. You don't learn the right Spanish, you're watching this show. <laughs> but let's see the, the, the others. Did you put them up, Kirk? Here we go. Okay. Yeah. You just had that interesting story. I want to make it. Yes, because he was talking about him being recognized in Japan and stuff. This was such a hit show that you are an iconic figure no matter where you go. 
And oh no, is oh, this uh, seen what happened to Rocky? I spoke to Rocky about two months ago. He's living in Miami, in, in uh, uh, what is the section here next to the uh, zoo? Chris? No. No. Okay. Well, pa Palmetto Bay. I don't know. Palmetto Bay. Yeah, more or less. Okay. He's there with the, uh, uh, his mother and his brother uh, Ernesto. Mm. And uh, I promise I, I was going to visit them, but I, you know, I'm I'm really busy right now. I, I will do it. Yeah. I, I like him. I like him a lot. He's, he's a nice person. Very, very nice person. Yeah. They are here. They are here. We're doing the wise guy. Mm. Play his father again. <laughs> Viña Viña. What's and, your uh, girlfriend? Your yellow Nick, girlfriend. Nick, Nick, Nickelodeon. Gala Gala Island. And that was the last of the photos, but um, we also wanted to show some of the uh, watercolors, the original, the, the the other the other side of Manolo de Verde, his, yeah. his career as a as a painter of beautiful did, images. Can you kind of introduce how you got into um, the arts? The visual arts and painting. Okay, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I I paint since I remember since I was eight or nine years old. I remember very clearly one day I came back from uh, from school, I did my homework, and I started listening to the radio because we didn't have a television in those days, and uh, I started painting. Uh, my mother had a, a, a cookie a cookie um, in box. And the, and the cover of the tin box it was a, a little flower. It was callas. Callas is a, a flower that is white. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Anyway, uh, I, I started painting automatically, watching the um, uh, or, or, or I can't remember the other one, uh, around 8 o'clock. And then I started painting at the same time I was listening to the radio. And then my, pa my father passed. I, he didn't know that I was painting. He said, who painted that? I said, I, I did it. I said, oh, come on. He grabbed the paper, the painting, gave me another piece of paper in blank, and I said, you do it again? I said, yeah. And then when he came back, I have, I have done it exactly the same way. And then he was surprised. and said, him, you know, you should let this guy learn how to paint. Professionally, he never did because my father was an accountant, and he wanted to. I mean, he wanted to be an, another accountant, which I hate. Hmm. So, uh, I, when I came in, here in uh, Miami, I started painting a little bit there, here and there, but not, not constantly. So one day I went to a story of. Uh, they sell, you know, artist supplies and so on. And then uh, I met this guy who was doing a, a mural. And he was a teacher. He's, uh, he's from Venezuela. And his name is Abdon Romero. He was my teacher, my real teacher. And uh, he never, never charged me for the lessons. And I said, Abdon, I have to pay you. He said, no, you have me already because you have made me laugh so much in my life mm -hmm. that I, I almost owe you these lessons. So he, he told me and then I started painting and then I uh, already made two, two, um, two expositions, one in Jerry Sartarama and another one in um, Little Flower Church at the uh, um, Hall. He, uh, that's it. And, uh, and I have sold already, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe 40 to 50 paintings. I find such um, watercolor so unforgiving because once you mark the paper, that's it. It better be correct. And I find them so 
beautifully rendered. Can we start the rolling some of the images? Because Ab absolutely, I was going to say let's let's share the blessings of your wonderful instructor and and your your wonderful work. Yeah. Is this an early work? When was this? No, 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 no. That's uh, as a, as a matter of fact. I know who bought the 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 uh, painting. Uh, um, la señora Cantera López Cantera. Mm. Uh, and uh, it was something that I made up. Uh, it's uh, me is the Met, the Metropolitan Opera House. I don't know, maybe. Mm. Wow. Take it, uh, it, it, this is, uh, I don't know, it, the, the image is kind of wide, loses the perspective. Oh, maybe maybe the way it was taken could could be the image was stretched a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that, that doesn't that doesn't make a difference, I guess. This is you know that I found this really really interesting because it looks like i don't know if she was or if she was real or whatever but it looks like a dancer no but, no that, that, that's a, that's from a picture no i know but the way that you have used the stains of the watercolor it's so it moves so the fact her pose yeah. and everything looks very fluid the whole watercolor looks very fluid so that's why it to me it's just like this dancer with that finished dancing and that I painted, whole... I painted twice I painted this twice and and both sold yeah very nice I I enjoyed this I I'm sorry I never kept it mm. myself <laughs> it's me from a dawn portrait of the artist yes a self portrait Don Romero signed by him. Huh? That's uh, a Cuban patio. Okay. I've never been, actually, but that screams Cuba to me. Yeah, especially Los Gallos. Uh-huh. Gallito, gallito. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's a simple one. But it's just so peaceful. Is this from a photograph or were you? A photograph, yes, yes. Did you take the photograph? Yes. Where was this? Oh, I think it was around here. I don't know, maybe. Really? Maybe Naples or some. Because uh, it, it just has this allure of Europe, like the Mediterranean. Well, let me, uh, to be honest, uh, the sea wasn't like that. It, uh, you know, when when you paint from a picture, from a photo, uh, you had the basic right. forms, but uh, you created the ambience. You know, they, they, they you sure. created uh, created the birds. You created a lot of things. You know, sure. And, and the shadows you invented. You you created them. Yeah. Maybe maybe they they don't show you know any red colors or any oranges. You put it there because it it, it is part of the uh, the picture, right? And another sea scene. Yeah, that's my favorite city. Mm. As a matter of fact, that that picture I took it. It was like maybe. I don't know, maybe it was six in the morning or something like that. Mm. So you have that haze of six in the morning. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the previous one, I I start painting it in on 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 site. That one. Ah. So you, you have to go fast. You have to really go fast. Huh. Because yeah. the light changes in five minutes. Yes. Yep. That's Venice too. Hmm. I actually knew that before you said it, and I have not been prompted. <laughs> makes me want. It makes me want to go there, though. Yeah. 
I really had the advantage of uh, four years of my life. I used to work as a uh, sales rep uh, for a very big company, uh, Marsans. And uh, I had the opportunity to travel all Europe uh, as a representative. And uh, I enjoyed being so many times in Venice, more than 15, maybe, maybe 20 times. And uh, I'm going myself and my, by myself and, and by, with a company, you know. And also, I travel widely and uh, very comfortable with the when the company pays you, you know, everything, the yes. food, the luggage, uh, the logging and everything. You know, yeah. you really enjoy a double the visit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And where was this? That's a simple one. It looks like it could be uh, Northern Italy or Northern California, perhaps. Uh, yeah. No, I would say, I would say, more likely is in Spain. Huh. Okay. The south. Okay. That, that's uh, something that made up, you know. This, this, uh, have you noticed it's kind of loose, you know. Uh, this, the, the, not the first one, the foreground tree, but the, the other one kind of, uh, it's not a very, uh, how do you say, uh, delineated form? Right. right. It's very loosely done. Right. It's very, very loosely. Yeah. I went, my lawyer bought that. Oh. I said, you don't know what you're doing. I said, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me tell you a secret. I don't know if the other painters uh, do it. Uh, you see the, the, in the background the trees? They're faded, faded, faded. Yes. You know, uh, I painted with my finger. And then I said to my teacher, you know, I painted with my finger. I says, you're not the only one. Michelangelo did. Da Vinci did. So everybody did. And uh, Van Gogh did it a lot. So there's nothing wrong with that. Painting with your fingers. 1970, here in this house, in my house. You've been there that long. I have been living in this house for 52 years. Wow. And I'm moving out. Yes. And and where 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 is this uh, the setting? Daytona Beach. Oh, the the setting of this of the painting. I'm seeing the, the painting. Yeah, the set. Oh, I thought you said you said where are you going to be setting? Oh no, but th th thanks for letting us know. We'll be able to look you up when we go through. Yeah, you say well, I think the trees and uh, and, this, and the, the the lake and the mountains, and then I said, well, I would like to have a, a little house there. So, and then I decided to put it. Mm. But it's really nice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I clicked. It, I clicked the, <laughs> the wrong. No, but it's it's it, it's nice because it shows the way you work, and I like the looseness. I even like it unfinished. Uh, the ghost very, figures, the ghostly figures that kind of appear. Lily, Lily, very very unfinished. Well, but that's okay. I'm telling you what I see oh. and how I interpret but, but it. That's my favorite painting. Yes, fantastic. I think I think this is sages, mm. sages, sages, in um, in, in uh, near uh, Castel de Fels, near Barcelona, and that that I painted direct. I I made the sketch and then I painted. Very then nice. It, it was it was it was very late, and as you can see, the moon, the right hand side, showing already. Well, I'd like I'd like to say I'm really enjoying not just the images, but the diversity of styles that you're employing th throughout them. Uh, I mean, it, it, you can you get the feeling that it's that it's all you, but but there's so much uh, so mu so much depth here. I'm 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 very 
very inspired. Mesquita in Cordoba. Yes, that's the my to do place. The next time I go to Spain, I'm dying to okay. go to South. Yeah, it, it Spain is and visit. It, uh, over close to eight hundred columns, and none is similar to the other one. Hmm. No one. This would be a wonderful time to open up to our online audience. We have a lot of people, and I'm allowing everyone who wishes to do so to unmute themselves. And we'd be delighted if anyone has any questions for our special guest artist, Mr. Can Manolo. You, this, this is Ubaldo. Can you hear me now? Yes, Ubaldo. Because I'm using, I'm using an extra camera, and I forgot to turn on the microphone on that camera. Ah! <laughs> Listen, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying, and the thing is that Manolo Villaverde, you know, it's something that a lot of people don't know. He's, he's the best person telling jokes. Yes! He can entertain the whole <laughs> theater. You know, every time we get together, he, he doesn't stop telling jokes. He's the best. On everything he does, he's the best. Thank you, Ubaldo. <laughs> no, I can't wait till we get you two together, Uvaldo, because, you know, I mean, it's it's been just our honor today to meet uh, Manolo today. But before this, we thought that you were the best joke teller we've ever seen. No, you haven't heard. You haven't heard Manolo. Okay? <laughs> they better do You can imagine the two of them. Yes, we... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have any other enjoy enjoy the paintings, enjoy his story. And let me tell you, you know, uh, it's an honor to be uh, part of his friends. And we have a time to be together with Marta Picanes, uh, with Norma Zuniga, and it's the best time I ever had with them. Gracias, Wanda. Acuérdame mandarte el cheque. <laughs> sí, porque okay. se va, se va de Miami y después no ves el cheque. Está ah. <laughs> bien, esto es de corazón, ¿ok? Uh, Ubaldo, tú sabes que, que la primera vez que eh, empujó un grande cuando yo llegué aquí, que yo no quería saber nada de, de teatro ni nada, 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 fue Norma Suña, me dijo, en una fiesta en casa de Griselda, que estaban preparando la rosa tatuada, y me dijo, Mani. Tienes que hacer ese papel. Un italiano buenote, medio tonto, medio normal. Vale. Lo dice porque, lo, porque yo soy medio normal, Norma. No, 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 porque eres, eres buen actor. <risa> Esa fue la rosa tatuada. Sí. Yo, yo tengo una historia. Este, okay. Bien rápida. Eh, que es, es unusual porque el gringo dice que yo soy una potorra. Este, um, una linda. ¿Ah? La linda. El caso fue que yo, yo estudié en Coral Park y entonces este, pero esta historia es de, de Rocky y entonces yo estaba enamoradísima de Rocky y me quedo mirando el postre así oh, y mi, mi amiga estaba al lado, yo pensé que estaba al lado mío. Y, y estoy, eso fue muchos oh, años antes. Antes de conocer el gringo. Okay. Y yo me digo, ay, pero qué lindo está y entonces él solía venir y practicar, um, eh, tú sabes, cantar con nosotros y eso en el coro. Y entonces ahí estaba Rocky Chavarría. Y entonces yo me viro y digo, mira que está bello Jack. ¡Ah! ¡Eh, Rocky! <risa> Ay, pero muy buena persona. De he verdad. Was such, él era such a, he was such a nice guy. And, well, I'm sure he's still a nice guy. Yeah. Well, we were, lo, lo, ese para mí lo mejor de Rocky era la, la inocencia que él tenía pura. Sí. Y en la época en que yo lo conocía. Era una sí. persona tan inocente, tan naif, tan, tan amoroso, que era increíble. Bella lo quería adoptar. <risa> Ese programa, todos, todos fueron excelentes. Pero además, los, los hispanos utilizaban el programa para aprender inglés. Sí. Los americanos usaban el programa para sí. aprender español. Porque estaba tan bien escrito, tan bien logrado en los claro. dos idiomas, que se entendía perfectamente, no importaba quién fuera. Eso, por eso cuando me pasó lo que me pasó en Japón, le dije al, al muchachito japonés, you're learning the, the wrong way. <risa> <risa> I 
like to sí, estaba aprendiendo Cuban, Cuban Spanish. And and for my gringo friends, uh, we like to say that we're talking about uh, Que Paso USA. It was so well written in both English and Spanish that it was easy to uh, easy to get it on both sides. And I, I know that uh, in you know when I was developing trying to defend myself in Spanish, uh, I watched several of the episodes of Que Paso USA, and I picked up I picked up things along the way. Um, and and also because I have a I had several good teachers. Incluyendo mi suegra y mi esposa. Um, something important about this program that uh, no people know, no, very few people know, uh, the script was re written in a way that we couldn't improvise or change the lines in different languages. Wow. Why? Because all the technicians on, they were monolingual English. Sometimes we change the line. Then they, they they get lost. I said, where are they going? I mean, what, what's going on? What is the next line? And then they get confused. So we have to be very careful switching from one language to the other. The, the line in, because we sometimes repeat the the um, the version in Spanish, and then one of the characters say version in English. I mean, it was written. So, like Ubaldo says, perfect, perfect, because we did a lot of paperwork. Something that they forget now nowadays. We have to be on top of that before we go into the into the studio. We have to know, know what's going on and the acting and the timing and everything involved. Belia used to say, timing is essential in this show. She was so right. And she was my teacher in timing. Timing is something very, very important in acting. And very few people, especially in comedy, have the timing. Mm. I admire her and Lucy because they were masters in timing. Yes. And Something else about the program, I'm sorry, is that it shows every different aspect of the change in cultures. The clash of the Cuban culture in Miami, it was perfectly portrayed. All the scenes, especially, you know, like the one in the, in the hospital where the whole family is in the room and the grandmother is bringing the Cuban soup and everything like that, and, and it's giving orders to the nurses. It really portrayed the, the, the clash of culture. And the, the thing also is that many people from other countries experience the same things the Cuban did. So it portrays the clash of cultures between the Spanish and the American people. It does. And, and, and the hospital is a perfect setting for that because usually in in the united states the the patient goes into the hospital and they're there to recover and right. they want peace and no visitors and if you take a cuban into the hospital la abuela la tatarabuela perrito, on el, both el, sides the dog, can, everybody you know. but, but remember Waldo, what happened at the end <laughs> the jewish guy next to the uh, to rocky's uh, bed yeah it happens the same with the mother, the Jewish mother. Oh, yes, yes. yes. It's, I mean, it happens in all the cultures, different ways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, different ways of behaving, but it's the same. The end is the same thing. The Greeks, the Italians, the Arabs. Oh, yes. The Italians and the Arabs. Oh, the yes, other the one, Arabs too. The other one that was a classic was, was when Norma was doing the, the, uh, uh, La Santera and Chamaco oh and he was doing the priest and they both, you know, because we want to be Catholic, but we also do, you know, the the black, you know, the Santeria. So the they call both of them to do something in the house and they meet the priest and the Santeria, which are opposite religions, right? Yeah. But, it, but it was so well done and so well acted by Norma Sonia 
and chamaco that I can see that over and over again and I still enjoy it. Yeah. And you it's know, still uh, relevant. The, the, the relevancy of it is what is eternal. It oh, doesn't yeah. change. You know, yeah, I, I, when I want my... It gives me to be, to be so humble. When I won my first Emmy, was this this uh, show that the camera, the TV camera, goes into the house, make a, uh, an interview? I don't know. It's called uh, the, actually the, the uh, title of the show is TV interview. It was it was amazing. It was good. it was good. Yeah. And uh, and uh, there was another one that is my favorite. <coughs> Citizenship. Oh yeah. God, that was so funny. <laughs> oh yeah. my God! Do you like so prostitution? Good. Yes, very. Oh good. yes, and I like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> it was unforgettable. A woman, Delia Martinez. Oh, oh my yes. God! Oh, what an actress! What an actress! So, Manolo, what are your accolades? You said you won an Emmy. What else? How many? Yes, I made, I made a lot of money. Okay, that's <laughs> he won that's, a lot that's of no, accolades. No, that's, that's, I'm sorry, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> he won it's a lot just of, the opposite. He won it's a just lot of the opposite. Award. He won a lot of awards from ACA, Association of Critics and Commentaristas of the Arts. He got a lot of awards. I remember that. Wow. See, right. You know what? Uh, he didn't pay too much. But after after that. I made good contracts, and it was like a rewarding for what I didn't get. Now, with Nickelodeon, I really got. So, I mean, if you, one, one day, a man asked me, how much did you get paid for Que Pasa? I said, well, uh. are you talking about money or knowledge? Or exposure, or what? Because I mean, so many ways to get paid for her. So I don't change anything for the moments we were together for four years doing this, and we felt like a real family. It was amazing. It was not working, it was reunion of the family. Every, every episode. I had never been in my whole career been so happy and so, uh, not, not only happy, so rewarding, so, uh, so enthusiastic that with this program. And I have made some of the plays. I made uh, Street Cabin and Desire, Picnic, uh, you name it, but nothing compared to Pasa USA. Hmm. And the funny thing is that you know what? One, la one last thing I want to tell you. you know, there are two people responsible for my my persistent my persistence to become an actor. My father, the person who I met the first time the theater, uh, the Teatro Universitario, Lena de Armas. He one day told me, you will never be an actor. And I, uh, and I answered her, do you want to bet? Hmm. My father, since I said, I don't want to become an accountant. See, he, prohib he, he prohibited my mother to watch TV when I was on The first time my father saw me acting was in the Rosa de Tua. I left to take it to my mother. I said, my mother, in, in the house, in, on top of the TV set, I said, Mom, to take it for you and dad to go to the theater. I said, Use it in somebody else because your father, you know them well, but you won't go. I, said, I, trust, I trust that he will. He did. And the first time I get a little emotion with this, 
understandably. At the, at the, at the, end, at the end of the play, the person who approached the, the stage was my father, according. Hmm. Since then, he made his mind. Said nothing else. I don't have anything else to go back to this. Now, I go back to Miami and uh, next week be uh, going to be uh, living character there. They don't know me, they don't know who I am or what. I did anything like that. I'm so happy to be one of them, you know, an unknown person to feel free, to feel like they love you because they love you. They don't love you because you are Pepe or whoever. No, they really love you because you are a person. I really enjoy that at the end. That's wonderful. And that's great that you found your oasis in Daytona Beach. Does that mean I can't Found my good friends, you? good names. Sorry? I said, does that mean I can't go visit you? You want anonymity? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can go, you can go there and uh, we, we can have coffee or uh, Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. Un cafecito. Uh, no, un cafecito. 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 Cafe con leche. I don't do cafecito. Listen, no, no. I, uh, there's only one place around there for Cuban coffee. Oh. Only one place. How bad is it? It's a Puerto Rican place. Oh. Yeah, but, but the cook is Cuban. Oh. Okay. And the lady and the lady is Excuse me. Cuban also. And she's she's always saying, Tico, ven acá, mi amorcito. Tu quieres hoy? Well, I wanted to just chime in too and say that um, um, as a, as a gringo who is inspired by all of those episodes of Que Pasa USA, and I'm, I'm hoping my wife will come. She must have ducked out for some reason, but um, I know that uh, you know Que Pasa USA definitely informed some of her work in creating the libretto for Always Remember, her musical about the Cuban American experience. And here I'm going to duck out of the way so you can see the logo there. And uh, we're actually right now at the time of this recording, we're in the middle of putting the show together. We're taping this on uh, September 25th, and the world premiere is on November 25th, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, I actually have uh, two of the actors uh, who are here, who are going to be in the premiere, uh, Craig Wheeler and Charlie Sothers. And I, I just wanted them to give, nice. give them a moment. Charlie, I know you, you said you were really thrilled to... Uh, jump in on this uh, on this Zoom today. Would you like to say hello? Oh, he can unmute. Okay, well, I I, re I remember uh, what Charlie told me. He said uh, he has he has an original Manolo Via Verde that was given to him several years ago and was especially excited to be able to join the uh, Zoom session today. And um, <laughs> there's there's the love. And um, also we've got Craig Wheeler, who is playing, we, in Maryland's, uh, the play for the libretto, there's two characters called Fulano and Mengano. And Craig plays Mengano. Would you like to say hello, Craig? He's, he's trying to unmute. There, there we go. You had me locked out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. I, I'm sorry. I was having some uh, technical difficulties on my end. Oh, my and, uh. Had to set up the stupid laptop. Anyway, um, I am thrilled. I am so glad that I came to this session, even even late, because hearing hearing your stories as an actor is, you know, it, it's so amazing um, to hear the stories. And actually, I was on YouTube looking up Que Pasa USA, uh, and there are some full um, episodes on on YouTube. So if anybody wants to see those, look them up. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see them. I, it's been years since I've seen any of them. Um, and I didn't see very many of them at all. Um, so I'm excited to watch them and thank you for sharing, um, your journey. It, it's very inspiring. And I guess I, I was, 
I had a technical glitch. Uh, Charlie, can you unmute now? Yes, thank you. There, there you go. There he is. Hi, I just wanted to say hello, hello, Manolo. Thank you so much for it's great to hear your voice again, and thank you for that. Um, it was a wedding present. Um, very lovely drawing that you made of an alley. I think it was in Spain. I've always wanted to ask you where it was. We have it framed in our house. And the people from Roxy send their hellos to you. And from uh, Roxy? I, yeah, from Roxy. Oh, I love these people. And I want to tell you that I tell your joke all the time. Que bonito. Que bonito. You remember that joke? Why don't you no? say it? There's a no. there's a viejito who's who's uh, drinking at a cantina. He's at a bar. And, um, you know, he drinks his whiskey and his little shot of vodka. And he's, he's drinking all the time. And the bartender asks him, well, viejito, ¿por qué tú tomas tanto? Why do you drink so much? And he goes, porque cuando yo tomo, yo me pongo bonito. And the bartender <laughs> says, what do you mean? You, you're, you're, you get pretty. Bonito. How do you get bonito? He says, well, I drink a little whiskey. I drink a little vodka. And then when I'm done drinking, I get home. And my old lady says, que bonito. <laughs> and by the way, a proposito, I should say uh, Charlie is playing the part of Pepe Timba in Always Remember. And the original Pepe Timba, the first it's one ever, was Ubaldo. Enriquez. Yeah. <laughs> the, the inspiration. The inspiration for that character. I can't wait to go and come and see the, the real thing on a stage. Oh. Finally. Well, he he inspired me and he helped me so much. You you you're my uncle in my heart forever. Forever. You helped me so much, you know. And you're yeah. my favorite niece. Oh, <laughs> thank you. There's a whole lot of love in this room. I, I'm digging I it. Tell you. Hey, Ubaldo was my husband during the Massachusetts trip, because oh, we, yes. we would get up at seven in the morning <laughs> yes. in the Cranberry Coast concerts and walk to the little Main Street and have our breakfast, because everybody else was too drunk to get up so early. <laughs> and they would go to a place, and, and, and they would say to him, and your wife? Or <laughs> and your husband? <laughs> yeah. One day I went by myself, and they said, where, where is your wife? Is she sick? <laughs> 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 oh, God. So, so Manolo, do you do you see all the all the love that you brought together here? This is really a tribute to your work, uh, to to what's what's shined through the decades. You know, it's good to see this. You know why? Because when you are working on TV, you don't see the reward on stage. Yes. Right at the end, you see if they like it or not. Yes. But uh, on TV, like in movies, you don't see, you know, they like it. They the they are okay. They uh, are, you know, in a way that it's 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 kind of cold work. Very cold. Yeah. Unless you put all your, your your love there, because you are an actor, the reward at the end, it's it's gone. You don't see it if they like it or not, and uh, and and that's that's the uh, that's the mystery of it. Wow. Well, I want to thank you for sharing these stories and your life and. Uh, your art with us. I really, like I said, when I introduced you, I'm so thrilled that you came on to my snapshots from the Cuban diaspora and Odyssey and images. I think, uh, we've talked about it. Nelly, Nelia has talked about it and I know she's pushed you to do this. Um, so I, I can always do it. it. She always does it and I always do it. Yes, uh, she is. She is my angel, my yes. friend, my sister, everything. You know what? Uh, I really appreciate this. 
this this uh, opportunity here because I mean it, uh, you never know when it's going to be the last thing you do never that I learned from una when, when an actress that Waldo knows Liana Ibiriku remember her okay uh, we were in a restaurant and then we he was uh, with her husband and then the moment uh, he was sitting next to another table and, uh, next in the restaurant and then when he, when I when I finished I was with a friend and when we finished I said yeah give me a break hug me because you never know when it's going to be the last hug eight hours later she was dead oh my god Wow. That lesson was unforgettable for me. Oh. Well, hopefully you'll you'll feel the love here in this Zoom and the hugs. But it's not going to be the last. Porque love each other. Right love each other and hug, yes. hug, hug. Hugs, hugs, hugs. And te voy a hey, 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 I'm going to visit you. Ana, please, Ana. Charlie, Charlie, yeah, oh, you, you're, you, you, you still dance as well? Uh, yeah, still dancing, but you, I don't know if you're asking for this Anna, but she's right here. Hold on one second. She is Anna. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Really nice to see you, Manolo, and I've been hearing you. It's been great, great, great. I love you. Voice. I love you. I always love you, Anna. I love you too, Manolo. You're lucky that you got uh, Anthony with you. I mean, Charlie, <laughs> Charlie. But uh, you know what? I lost. <laughs> How's you. everybody? Good. We're doing well. Come good. by the theater. Give my, yes. give my regards to everybody there. Will do. Will do. Okay. And if you come by the theater, Bye, I'll make a cafecito personally. Okay, <laughs> Charlie. How haven't changed, Charlie. <laughs> I kind of have a feeling, uh, Manolo, that just about everywhere you would go in this room, there'd be a, a cafecito waiting for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Thank, we, we thank are... you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You're I welcome. Love you. Thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Bye, Husta. Yay. Bye. Bye. Husta. Besos. Muchos besos. Así, para todos. Para todos, everybody. Sí.